Okay, this is a video about bee trees. I'm going to talk about what they are, why we have them, the basic rules, and then a short example, and I'll have longer examples in other videos. So I'd refer you to these notes, page 43 of the notes. I'm going to kind of go through these and talk, um, and you might want to follow along with that if that's helpful to you. So what have we looked at so far? We've looked at binary trees, right? Now, the reason we like binary trees is that computers compare things in two at a time. Uh, so, you know, something's either less than or greater than, or uh, basically that's it. Uh, and, and so the logic is real clean with a, bi with a, a binary tree. Now, if you had, if, uh, say, a trinary tree or a quaternary tree or something like that, if you had a tree with more than two children and you tried to do this kind of logic, what's the logic going to look like? It's going to be not pretty, all right? Um, this is a bad, messy way to do that, whereas this is pretty good and, and, and clean. So instead of that, what a bee tree has is it is it has an array. Each node is an array, and we insert data in the, in the array in uh, sorted order and so that's basically the idea so in the notes you can see I have a structure here where each node is an array with n keys and then n children and these children are this children array is some kind of pointer to to the child nodes and it, here it's an integer but it could be an actual pointer or it really depends on the details of how you're of the tree, of how you're constructing the tree, because these things are very big, and it's not necessarily a memory pointer that you're going to be be using, but it might be some kind of an index into a file structure of some time or of some kind, or an index into a disk on another machine. Okay, so the children is how how you point to the children is kind of complicated, but conceptually we can we can just use an integer. So. So in between the the keys here, you're going to have some arrays of of pointers that also point to the 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 children, which are also arrays. Okay, that's the basic the basic idea. So now, like that's kind of what it is. Now, why would you do that? Well, one reason is the logic is going to be easier. Like instead of this complicated logic for many children, you would just have, you know, a for loop here, and then you would go somewhere, right? You would, you would loop through these guys and then follow some link. And then once you got to a new guy, you'd have another for loop, and then you'd go down to its ch child. So the, so this array organization makes the logic a lot simpler. All right, but, but another, that's one reason for why is that the, the logic is simpler when you have multiple children. But why do you have multiple children? Well, some data just has multiple children, like um, a file structure, right? A file system, like, you know, it has folders, and each folder can have any number of other folders, right? And each one of those folders can have any number of other folders. So there's a file system. There's also the system registry in Windows, which has a similar structure, and instead of folders, they call that they call that hives, okay? Folders and and hives, just different names for the nodes in here. All right. So this is the classic example of why of a of a of a kind of data that naturally falls into this sort of B tree structure: files and sys registries. Now you could probably think of other data from like other you know real world data. Some of some of that, there are certain kinds of real world data that naturally maps into you know into uh, this B tree structure. Okay, so that's really the other why, and the second why, the third why is there's two kinds of memory. It's really a memory and architecture situation. There's there's primary memory in a computer, and then there's secondary memory in a computer. So the primary memory is typically RAM, and secondary memory is typically, well, for a long time it's been disk. 
it's increasingly becoming some kind of flash memory. But how big are these things, right? Like I have a pretty nice machine and it has 16 gigabytes or actually it might even have 32 gigabytes. I haven't looked, but it's gigabytes, right? How big is your disk? It's like, it's not uncommon to have a terabyte drive now. So this is giga versus tera. This is a thousand times bigger, right? It's three orders of magnitude bigger. So the biggest amount of data that you could store in RAM is, you know, on the order of gigabytes, but it's very easy to have terabyte data nowadays. So you can't fit all the data in one machine. In fact, you can't even fit it in one disk now. Like you might have to have, so this is like one machine, one machine. You might have to have an array of, of disks in a server farm, you know, where each one has, you know, a portion of the data in it. All right. Um, so, you know, it's an architecture issue. So you might be able to use a B tree, but you know, you might not. It depends on how big the data is. It depends on what exactly you're storing in the in the keys. Like here, we're going to store uh, the key and pointers, right? We're going to store the, the keys the, the keys themselves, and then we're going to store pointers. But you might actually want to put some data. You know, it's not a, it's not just about looking up keys, right? What fun is that? The point, the reason we're looking up keys is because we want to. There's some other data associated with the key. Like somebody might give you their phone number and that's the key. And then you want to look up all this other information about them, like where they live and all that kind of stuff. So there, there could be more than just the keys and the children in here. And these can get very big. But the point is, and we're studying some classic data structures, binary trees, B trees. In real life, you're not going to do any of those. You're going to do something totally unique and you're going to draw out from your experience and from your education of these classic structures to, to build something that's completely new. All right. So the rules, all right. So basically let's say we had an insertion sequence of like two, one, three. So we're going to have, let's say we have four um, keys. So these are sorted. So the two comes along, you scan, well, and you find the first, you find the uh, proper location to put it in sorted order. This is empty, so you just put it here. Okay, then the one comes along, you scan. One is bigger than two, so you gotta scoot this two down and then put the one here, all right? Then the three comes along, you, you scan, and one, three is bigger than one, three is bigger than two, so you put the three here. This is just like an insertion sort, right? Or it's like a uh, priority queue that, that we did earlier. Okay, then let's say uh, four comes along. You know, you'd scan. Four is bigger than one. It's bigger than two. It's bigger than three. You'd put him here. And then now five comes along. So five is bigger than one. It's bigger than two. It's going to go here. So an implementation detail is that you do need an extra little spot to hold this guy. But this key is full. So what's going to happen is this thing, the middle number, is going to, it's going to, sometimes I use the word pop because it, it's not a stack. It's, oh, I don't know if, but pop just sounds good. It, it leaves the key and then the key, the key, uh, I'm sorry, it leaves the node and then the node splits into two more nodes. So this is a um, split or sometimes they even use the word rotate. Um, it's a transformation of some type. We use, we use the, I guess split is a good word. And what happens is um, a new root is formed and the, uh, this guy here breaks in half and one and two go in this guy and four, oops, wrong. Three goes in this guy, all right? And then all the, um, all the data elements less than this middle three value go in the in this new node, and all the values that are bigger than that, um, you know, go in go in this side. 
So we can do some more insertions now. So let's say it's time to insert. I'm just going to keep them in sorted order. Although they wouldn't necessarily show, necessarily show up that way, but it does make the execution a little bit easier. So six shows up. So you start at the root, like you would any tree, and you're looking where to put this guy. So six is bigger than three, so you go over here. Now, we're at the end of the, the uh, data, so we've really found the insertion point, but this is not a leaf, and all insertions are done at the leaves. Leaves is the bottom most row of, of, of the uh, tree. So that means we follow this link and then we do another insertion, uh, sorted, uh, uh, insertion sort kind of a thing. So, um, oh, already, I'm doing five again. We already did, what are we doing? Oh, six. Yeah. So six is bigger than three. I found the, the, um, the place to put it, but, but I follow the link. And then I'm looking for where to put six, and this is a leaf, so it actually the six will actually go here. So I go, uh, you know, more than four, more than five, the six goes here. So if I inserted seven, then I'd start here. Seven's bigger than three. I'm at the end, so I follow the link, and I then I do another insertion sort. So four, uh, seven is bigger than four, bigger than five, bigger than six. Seven goes here. Let's say eight came along. It's gonna it's gonna end up here. This is will this node will split now, and the middle node will, like I say, I like to use the word pop, even though it's not a stack. It will go up to the parent, and uh, this leaf will split in two. So we have a split. So um, um, there's our root. The three goes in there. The six goes in this location. This this leaf just stays the same. This this leaf here, this goes into it, it's going to break in half. So um, there's going to be two more nodes, and uh, so this 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 link, all of these guys in here are less than three. All of these guys in in here are between three and six. So that's four and five. Four and five is in between three and six, right? The numbers four and five are less than six and bigger than three. Then all the guys over here are going to be bigger than six. So that's our seven and our eight. And that's the basic idea. Let me um, go through that again. So we start with the root. When it overflows, the middle node will pop. The lead, the in this case, the root is a leaf. The leaf will split into two more leaves. The middle node will go up, and everything in this leaf will be less than this, this key, and everything in this leaf will be bigger than this key. You'll keep doing insertions, and you'll, you'll, all the insertions happen at the leaves, so you'll, you'll follow down you know, until you get to a leaf, and you'll insert it in the proper order. At some point, it'll overflow, the middle node will pop up to the next, up to its parent. In this case, the six goes here, and uh, the, the leaf will split. So that's that's how it works. So I'll make a couple of more videos on with some specific examples.